Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm super happy to be live here again with you. We love taking risks and we love doing live things. Uh, good morning, Nagesh, Jessica, David, Ian, Ravi, Mohamed, and Nick Akinjilar. Did I say that right? Right enough. <laughs> <laughs> right enough. How are you doing, Nick? And how do you, you say your name? Uh, Akinslar. Akinslar, yes. I yeah, almost like Sinclair, but slightly different. <laughs> Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, where are you today, Nick? Uh, from Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Cool. And in sunny California. That's starting to get colder these days. Yeah, likewise. Uh, yes. And let me check. So we have, whoa, more than 300 people on LinkedIn and also a smaller number on YouTube. But both work. Both will have the recording later. People always want to know if we are going to have the recording. And yes, this is being recorded. This is going to be available immediately after we're done. We love taking risks. We like making things hard. So we're ready for your questions. Issa wants me to call her by her name. And I just did. Uh, and yes, Paul says that Scotland is very cold. But what's hot today? What do you want to talk about today, Nick? Because I'm... I love having new features to show off and demo. Yep, uh, we'll be covering today the new uh, external network feature. Um, that external they just network, Snowflake, yeah. Yep, I and I've been seeing blogs. So for example, here, Vivianesh Saxena wrote this blog: external network access on Snowflake Snowpark unlocking new capabilities. Because Snowflake, for a long time, have been able to call external functions. How right. is this different? Yeah, so since the inception, I guess 2015, later they added the external functions, but the, mm -hmm. with the external functions, the limitation was you had to have an intermediate uh, Lambda service basically, and then the rest, it was a REST API call all the time. And then it had to be in a specific way. So you always had a, 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 a REST API plus a middleware, which was a, a Lambda in the middle using some kind of a cloud gateway. So it worked, but you know it had additional components in the middle. With this new feature, we're kind of removing, getting rid of all the intermediate steps, and you'll be able to direct the call pretty much any network-related service. That's really cool. And with that, we like we are able to just call any service directly, and you have three different demos for us today. Yeah, that is correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, the limitations uh, right now um, it is in public preview for AWS accounts mm -hmm. only. And then it will hopefully soon go into Azure as well, available in Azure, but right now it's AWS only. So the three demos I set up for you guys, um, uh, three separate use cases with very similar code. So you can see like, without having to refactor the code a whole lot, we can actually achieve three completely separate use cases. The first one is around alerting. Again, we wanted to make this fun. So we're gonna have Snowflake uh, essentially call Alexa uh, and send messages for alerting features uh, through an API. Uh, mm -hmm. The second one is a web scraping uh, use case, right? Uh, we do have a lot of customers that are using Spark and other uh, platforms to uh, do web scraping and content, um, storing the content, analyzing, analyzing content. Again, we'll uh, use this new feature to scrape basically data from Wikipedia around different topics. And the third one is straight up, hey, we're gonna call a REST API. Mm -hmm which is uh, a public uh, REST API for standardizing US postal addresses. Again, that's a real use case that from one of my customers where um, they are receiving uh, uh, addresses from customers and they wanna standardize it in their database in a proper format. Um, so these cool. are the three use cases that we're gonna look at. So that's some fun. Like we're going to actually call Alexa. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We are going to do some web scraping and we're going to do uh, calling APIs just to show off the range of things we can do. And uh, I have here a message from David. David is wants some love from Azure. That's because this is public preview right now. So all Snowflake customers can use it, but only within uh, certain regions. I think AWS is all regions, if I remember, um, but Azure should be following soon. So I think that's, you know, from what I heard, 
it's not going to take too long for the Azure to be onboarded on this one. Yeah. So looking at the docs, is preview support for this feature is available to accounts on Amazon, except the Gov region, but uh, things are going to, uh, everyone is going to get some love. Yes. Yeah. We're yeah. in preview right now. So that's why, how we start testing the, uh, the external access integration. So would you like to go into demo mode? Sure. Let's go get started. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me unshare mine. Let's do the entire screen and switch off. Just want to make sure that you guys can see my screen. I can see your screen. All Excellent. right. All right. So we're going to use the new external network access again, which is fun. It's actually, matter of fact, it's so much fun. It should be a crime, but it's not. So we're doing the demo. Um, so uh, with this feature, you get a couple of brand new Snowflake objects that you'll be able to configure. Um, the first one is called a network rule. Obviously, security is top of mind, anything we do in Snowflake. So one of the first things we want to make sure is that when we give you the option to call outside services from Snowflake directly, you need to be able to define those services, external services. So the first one is called a network rule. A network rule is essentially a, a schema level Snowflake object uh, that you can create. Again, it could be one object, multiple objects that allows you to essentially create a, a, a list of fire out, outbound mm -hmm. uh, firewall rules for certain web addresses and uh, IP addresses. And in this case, I'm creating uh, an egress network rule that allows Snowflake servers clusters to be able to reach out to these specific uh, web addresses that we will use in this demo. So it's pretty much simple as creating this object. Yeah, I, and, I love this because this divides responsibilities because between your account admin and your developers. Yes, they can call any URL, but any URL, the account yeah. admin of the account lets them. Those. Exactly. And the nice thing is because there, these are schema level objects, you can create multiples of that. So you can, John can have a rule that can reach out to Wikipedia, but Joe might be able to just uh, access the streetapi.com. So you can have multiple network rules uh, dedicated to different roles. And it, just like any other you know, object, you can grant access to these rules to different uh, roles uh, so they can start using it. Right. Exactly. That's how we make so, things secure. Exactly. So it's now that we have our rule created, um, next is that uh, we're going to create a new object, another new object called secret. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a secret is, um, again, a schema level object um, that allows you to store credentials um, in Snowflake in a secure manner. So those credentials are not part of your code. And again, because these are Snowflake objects, then once you create an, um, a secret, you're able to grant access to this object, in this case, Voice Key, Voice Monkey API, um, where uh, other people can use it without actually spelling out the secret itself in the code itself. And there are different types of secrets. In this case, we're using a generic string uh, as a secret. You can also have OAuth2 uh, type of secret and whatnot, but for this use case, we're just using a generic one. And once you have the secret, just like any object, we can go ahead and grant that secret to a sysadmin or any other role that needs to use it. And yeah. from that point on, they'll should be able to use that secret for their code. And speaking of taking risks, that was a secret secret that you yeah. could probably... <laughs> yeah, this is a secret uh, until the end of this demo, then it will disappear. So don't try to call yes. my... Uh... <laughs> Hopefully nobody's going to try to call my um, Alexa. Yeah, and well, also what I like about Snowflake is that this secret is not logged. It just exists while you are saving it and then no one else can see it uh, on the logs or anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. But they can use it. So exactly. Let's see how to use it. So now we have a firewall rule and we, all, we also have a, a, a API key stored in a secret. Now we have to put those mm -hmm. two, two together to make a combination. And that actually becomes an account level object called external access integration. And in this mm -hmm. case, we create a, a integration called voice monkey access integration. And in that integration, we're telling what outbound rules, what websites we can hit, as well as yep. what APIs keys we can use in our code. So that marries the 
access keys with the actual web addresses. And again, you can have one or multiples listed here um, and make multiple combinations. But in this case, uh, we can act with this rule, I can reach out to four different websites, but I can only use this key if I use this integration. This becomes an account level object. And again, because it's an object, we can grant this access to another role, and then they're able to leverage that um, object within the code. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, in terms of what we're going to do is, I'm sure um, AWS has their own uh, APIs, but I found this e really easy website um, called voicemonkey.io. You'll kind of register it. You go into devices, you add your Alexa, register it to this website. Once you, you register- You already have the Amazon News. <laughs> yes, right, every time you say, say Alexa- you upgrade to the family yes. plan. Just say upgrade let's Amazon use, News. Let's just call it Alex so it doesn't wake uh, up. Alex, yeah. OK, so mm -hmm. we'll call it Alex so it doesn't respond. And then once it's registered, you do get an API key. And from this API key, we're able to send uh, announcements that we can say, uh, let's say this is a test. And if we send a request, that should play through this is Alex. A test. Yep. I can hear you, Alex, now. Cool. Perfect. All right. So that's the API that we're going to use. So if you go switch back, let's see how we do that. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to create a Snowflake function. Uh, called call Alex, because I don't want to say the name. And there's a single string input called topic. Um, and the handler is we're defining the in external in access integration that gains, uh, gives us what uh, allows this function to be able to access the external websites that we define and also be able to leverage certain API keys, in this case, the voice monkey API key. Um, the second thing that we are uh, defining in part of the function, again, these two are new, is the secrets. Uh, secrets is a parameter. It's a key value parameter. You basically put in the key that you want and how it should, which API key should be mapped out to. Again, this prevents the actual API key from being leaked out into the code itself, right? Mm -hmm. And then the actual code is very simple. Um, so we're importing a couple of objects, uh, import requests. That's the standard um, you know, request object for uh, Python that you can do get and put requests. And there's also underscore snowflake import that allows you to gain access to this secret. Um, the code is very simple. Um, I actually had uh, uh, ChatGPT write it for me, <laughs> so I didn't even spend time. Uh, so you're creating a session. Again, this is pretty standard session object that allows the code, your function to have a single session without having to disconnect and reconnect and uh, send multiple requests through the same session. And then you create a really basic uh, a Python function that's basically called get page um, and has one input called topic. You create a string, uh, uh, a parameter called my token, and then you use that Snowflake uh, import that we use, and it has a new function called get generic uh, secret secret string, and it calls the cred. So basically, that's that's how you read map to the voice monkey API key secret itself to the cred object. So once you call the cred object through this function. The output is whatever the actual secret stored in that voice monkey API gets defined, assigned to this my token string. And then we do a simple straight uh, call to the API. It's a get API. In the token se section, we're swapping the token with the actual token, which is the key. Uh, device name is my echo dot. That's part of that API that defines my, uh, my Al Alex device. <laughs> Um, and the text equals the topic. Again, that's the message that you want to send. And then right after that, once you construct the URL, get URL, you do session.get, you get a response back, and we turn the response to a text and return as a result. So pretty as simple as you can get um, in terms of calling a, an API endpoint. So go, we'll go ahead and create this function. So that should create a brand new function called call Alex. 
And then once the API is done, we Ooh, can actually go ahead one. and use literally standard SQL functionality to call uh, this function. Uh, this is a UDF. So exactly, this is, becomes a UDF. Uh, let's say to let you know, uh, Nix code works. Hopefully, this will work. <laughs> All right, then try. This is Snowflake calling to let you know Nix code works. There we go. So, external APIs in uh, real time. That's uh, amazing. We're able to call an API and make Alex talk. Um, yes. So if you had a sub select doing a count start, you could yeah. do a join and let it tell you whatever results you're getting. Exactly. So, so you could use this for alerting features. Again, you know, this will be probably pre-annoying alerts, but you can run this right after a pipeline ends, or if there's an error or failure, you can have your Alexa tell you all about it. I find that super cool. Uh, some questions in the sure. before we go to the next demo, <laughs> David. Uh, he's interested because um, he's saying rules and secrets are database level, but the integration is account level. Uh, you have any thoughts on that design? Um, I will have to. I guess I'll check, but my assumption is. Um, you're able to combine database level objects right here into an account level object. And when you grant this account level object the roles, they don't need to have access to those schemas. I think that's the idea behind it. Yeah. So these yeah. Uh, network rules and secrets can reside on different databases, different schemas. But if you want somebody to use that combination, that's the account level object that you can define, uh, assign to someone else where they don't need to access to those databases and schemas. Nice. So we should test that. Also, what do you know? This is a question from Raj about egress and ingress charges. Of course, if we um, that's a good question. Um, we are so in this case, we're doing a get request. So I don't think there will be any egress charges. We're not sending in out any data. Um, that I will have to look at. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. That's okay. Those are good questions, and yeah, yeah. we will get answers for them, even if but, we don't have them again, right now. But like, again, uh, because these are primarily like um, you're sending out URL requests, the amount of data that's been moved is fairly minimal. So even if there was any charge, I, I doubt it'll be anything uh, yes. substantial. Yes, and let me celebrate a couple of comments that people are super happy. Uh, Manuel Isra de Aguinaga. It's amazing how simple this looks like. I love it. I love it too. And Gopal, he says that the fairly simple integration steps of voice monkey. It's, it's amazing. You just did super simple steps and we are listening. So let's go to some web scraping now. All right. So second second use case is again, that's coming from my customers. So I just wanted to quickly replicate what they're doing in Snowflake using these new rules. Um, and in this case, uh, we're creating another integration rule um, because this is web scraping. Again, I didn't have to do this, but just to kind of point out that you can have multiple uh, integration rules. We can create a wiki access integration. In this case, we are just defining the network rules because this is just plain get requests from a web page. So we're not sending out secrets. So there's no secrets involved. So that means if I assign this integration to a role, They'll be, they, they will be able to reach out to these websites in that firewall rule, but they won't be able to access any of those secrets that we defined earlier. So that's the primary reason of having, you know, why you would, you might want to create a new integration just for this, right? And code is shockingly similar. Um, again, Wiki function name is obviously different. Wiki via Python, uh, again, I didn't change the inputs. Topic is the string. Um, get page. The one difference is in terms of packages, um, we are using request package just like the other one. We're also using a beautiful soup for package from Python. Uh, this is coming from Anaconda uh, distribution yep. channel. So the beautiful soup for is a, a basically a third party Python library that allows you to kind of clean up the HTML code once you script the HTML page. 
and basically provides you with the actual text content of a page uh, by removing all the HTML elements out of it, uh, yeah. which makes it and a lot it's easier. It's already part of the Snowflake offer read, thanks to Anaconda. Exactly. So we read, it's there. Yeah, third-party library. Since we don't have any secrets, that's commented out. Um, the code is, is going to be fairly simple uh, or and similar. Um, you'll see that BS4 is uh, the beautiful sort of object, exact same code. This time, the website URL is wikipedia.org, wiki. And then we just want to pass a topic, basically a wiki topic. Uh, and then we want to get that page, the actual HTML content into our response object. And then response.txt becomes the um, HTML content of the page. And we'll send it to run it through the beautiful soup function. And that will output only the text content of that page, stripping out all the HTML elements. And we'll take that soup.getText to get the text elements and return it as a result. Again, fairly straightforward. You know, most of the code is identical. And I did that on purpose to show you that, you know, you don't need to engineer a whole lot of different code to do different things. So now that our uh, code is uh, function is registered. Um, we can go ahead and call wiki Python. And in this case, I'm asking it to go into Snowflake Inc. is the topic. So now I run it. So it took about two point two seconds. And if I expand <laughs> this, so this actually scrapes the Wikipedia's page around uh, Snowflake Inc. Right. But you'll see that all the HTML elements are removed and some of this like main menu items and things like that. Um, yeah. So that is how it works. But you're not limited to just do a single, you know, single call. So you can also have pass in actual columns to it as well. So in this case, we can create a, a table, a sample table, right? Called wiki, ta uh, wiki websites with a single column called topic. And we're just going to insert a couple of values there that we want to extract. So now um, it, just like SQL. Yep, just SQL. Plain old calling SQL. whatever website you want to call. <laughs> exactly. So I have a and table with three rows. Any logic with Python, crazy. <laughs> yep. Uh, BMW, Snowflake Inc., mm -hmm. and Hadra Cafe. And in this case, now we're going to call the same function against all three websites. <coughs> And then now Python is running in parallel. So you'll see that the response time was about the same, 2.8 seconds. That's mm -hmm. because Snowflake parallelizes that function. So it's actually making individual calls to the, the different pages all at the same time. So that's handled by Snowflake. So you don't have to worry about it. And as again, as we're not I, killing Wikipedia, but yes. Yes, as long as Wikipedia is th not throttling things. And I can uh -huh. go ahead and insert another three tape rows. Now I have six rows, right? Uh, and I can run the same thing again, six rows. Again, it should be about the same time, the execution time, because we're parallelizing all these workloads. So you can see different web pages scraped. So now I can go ahead and you know extract or analyze, run a tour ML process and whatnot. So that's a very simple way to extract uh, web content from public web pages. Beautiful. So that was our um... second use case. <laughs> Yes, I have two questions that are very similar, one from LinkedIn, one from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, people always want to do more. So Krishna is already asking, is it always the public internet? How about some private network, internal APIs? Ah, on good YouTube, question. Aditi is asking the same, connect to AWS VPC mm -hmm. to the enterprise network. Yeah, um, as far as I know, the public preview is limited to publicly facing uh, URLs. Mm -hmm. So if the URL is behind uh, some kind of firewall or VPC, currently we're not able to access that. Um, but that, from what I hear, those those that will change in the f future. Yeah, especially if customers are asking for it, then why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I love that everyone is thinking of how do we extend this right now. That's yeah, it. and I have like these are pretty simple. You know, I'm. Honestly, I'm a lazy person, so I don't want to code a whole lot. Um, so, but I do. I do have colleagues that actually built uh, external functions that can call MySQL and Postgres databases using drivers. So, the use case is pretty much unlimited as long as the endpoint is accessible through public internet. 
Beautiful. We are not limited to just downloading web pages. We, we can right. do it, yes. And you're going to show us an API next. Sure. I see in your clock that we have four minutes left. All uh, right, let's go ahead and get cranking. Uh, so in that's another real use case. Um, <laughs> so again, we're going to create a brand new secret. For this is another REST API. Um, it's going to streets API. This allows you to basically set a REST API that you can send US postal addresses and it, that, that will return a, a standardized USPS version of it, along with additional metadata around like lat long coordinates and commercial and residential and things like that. So again, we create our secret, we create a integration rule, marrying the network addresses to API keys. And pretty much the function is US address. Um, in that case, we're passing a different URL. We're passing the address in this case. And we're just going to clean up some cleanup of the, uh, the what you get is a JSON payload in this case. Uh, we just remove the array elements and returning the output. Again, shockingly similar to the first code with few changes. Again, now if I actually send this US address and what I get in return is a JSON payload of the actual fixed up version primary address along with lat long coordinates and additional metadata. But again, uh, if you want to do this for bulk, we can actually create an address list, a table, insert a couple of addresses uh, with missing zip codes and miss, you know, different casings, right? And then if you look at the uh, address list, now this on the left-hand side, we have the original addresses. Some are partial, some are full. And if you want to update this uh, table quickly with the new functionality that we have, US address function, now we updated it. Now I can take that and parse that JSON into individual elements. So now I have the new address as well as lat long and zoning type for that address with the proper zip codes and casings. So again, this is a, a, a bit essentially a doing a, a REST API call. Okay. Bravo, my friend. One last thing before we close. Okay. Um, the same thing is also available with Snowpark. So you are able to uh, register a function uh, using the Snowpark UDFs. They added a new uh, option to basically define your token. When you register the um, function, you can actually point out the ex external access integrations and the secrets as part of the UDF. So that same functionality you get on the SQL side, you can exercise on uh, Snowpark as well on 1.7 and up. On the Python Snowpark libraries. That yep. Nice, yep. so cool. Uh, do you have a meeting to go now? Or do you have two minutes to answer the last questions before we close Sure. Down? Yeah, sure. I can. Go ahead. Uh, so ask, yes, ask everyone looks super happy. Uh, M2200 something says, this is insane. I agree. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and I'm always thinking big because, uh, oh, how do we contact a short that was to mesh? Uh, is JavaScript supported for calling external URLs? I would say um, Python for now. Or? Not JavaScript. I think it is limited to right now Java and Python. Java, so Python. No, no Scala and not, no JavaScript. But people can uh, ask. I mean, I love that we started JavaScript, hopefully, if people enough people want it. Yeah. Uh, I love thinking big. Are these integrations also replicated as part of cross-cloud failover? Good question. I will have to get back on that one. <laughs> yeah. I would say no right now because it doesn't work across cloud, just works on one cloud while we're in public preview, yeah. but I'm sure they'll the kind that of in. Yeah. important questions. The, do you the have future, the, yeah. people want code, do you have the uh, Git repo? Git repo for this code? Uh, I yeah. don't, but uh, I'll, what, what we can do is I can post the code in the, the LinkedIn live event chat area. Cool. And with that, I think we need to start closing. 
Uh, this was amazing. Any last words you would love to say before we leave? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, I think we started the dem uh, session with a cool demo. Uh, I think we should finish it with a uh, cool ending. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another table with a message. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then I'm going to call that message through Alexa. Thank you for joining us on LinkedIn to preview our brand new external access feature. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and see you at our next event with a new set of features. Bye bye for now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. Oh, three demos with two variants, 30 minutes. Truly awesome. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and of course, Previa wants to find the documentation. It's all here. Well, of course, you can find Nick on LinkedIn. Uh, on our documentation, go and see how to create and use an external access integration. I love our new docs. Uh, of course, our official blog securely connect to LLMs and other external services from Snowpack. It doesn't need to be only LLMs. And we have a DBNH blog. And with that, thank you, everyone. I love you all. Uh, you can find me also LinkedIn on what used to be Twitter, on threads, etc. Find Nick. Come to Reddit or Snowflake. Share what you do. Thanks a lot. And thanks, Nick, for bringing yeah, such so, an exciting demo. Yep. Go ahead and use this new feature. Very cool. Very cool. Let's make the bird dance us off now. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.